Hello friends, this video on respiration in organisms part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Concerned. So let us see exactly what happens in the alveoli. So each bronchiole ends in cluster of tiny air chambers called alveoli. So you see this terminal end, this tiny branching, it has been magnified here. So when you magnify it and see, you will be able to see some balloon like swollen structures. So these swollen structures are nothing but they are air chambers and these are called alveoli. And alveoli are the sites where the actual exchange of gases take place because when we breathe in the air, that air passes through the uh, pharynx, it passes through the trachea, then it enters inside the lungs it, in the bronchi bronchi and the bronchioles, then what, where it goes. Then the air which has been breathed in, oxygen has been taken from that air and then it, when it reaches the alveoli, that is where the oxygen is being transferred to the blood and from blood, blood flows throughout the body. So the blood is going to carry it to different parts of the body. So that is how oxygen is actually transferred or oxygen is provided to each and every cell of the body. So this exchange of oxygen between the uh, lungs and the cells or the blood of our body that happens at the alveoli. So that is why alveoli are very important because they provide a surface where the exchange of gases can take place and this is a two-way exchange because oxygen is being taken in so the oxygen needs to be supplied to the blood vessels and carbon dioxide which is being produced in the cells that is to be provided to the lungs so that it can be thrown out so let me try to explain it in this so exactly what happens in this entire process is so we breathe in air now when we breathe in air where does it go it enters our body through the nostrils from nostrils it gets into the nasal cavity from nasal cavity it gets into the pharynx from pharynx it goes to the trachea which is the windpipe from trachea this is trachea from trachea it will go to the bronchi from bronchi it goes to the bronchioles correct and from bronchioles it reaches the alveoli because alveoli are nothing but the ter they are present at the terminal ends of the bronchioles. So at these terminal ends only you have these alveoli present and from alveoli where do they go? They enter the blood vessels. Now how blood flows throughout our body? Blood also flows through tiny tube like structures called arteries, veins and capillaries. So these blood vessels are present in the alveoli. So alveoli are like richly supplied with these blood vessels. So from alveoli it gets into the blood vessels and these blood vessels since blood flows throughout our body so it transports it to the rest of the body. So this is how oxygen so when we breathe in air the body targets mainly on oxygen because oxygen is something which is needed by the cells of our body. So this is how oxygen reaches each and every cell of our body. Now when each cell receives oxygen, what will happen? The process of cellular respiration takes place. That is the process of oxidation of food takes place. Now as the process takes place, what happens? Carbon dioxide is produced. Now the cells do not need carbon dioxide. So from all over our body, the carbon dioxide is given by each and every cell into the blood vessel. Again, the reverse process happens. So the blood vessels will bring them to the alveoli. Alveoli will bring them to the bronchioles, then to bronchi, then trachea, then pharynx, nostrils, and finally carbon dioxide will be given out. Now it is not only oxygen which is taken in again, air is being taken in but only oxygen out of that air is actually transported to the cells of the body. Similarly when we breathe out all the air is being breathed out like nitrogen and other gases which are not required by our body they are all breathed out along with the carbon dioxide. So that is why we say that overall we take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide and this is how the exchange of gases takes place inside our respiratory system. So what do we see? Alveoli are the main places where actual exchange of gases take place because still alveoli it was just passing through one part to another but it was still there within the respiratory system. So starting from nostrils till alveoli they are all part of the respiratory system but only at this junction the 
real exchange between the respiratory system and the blood vessels take place. So that is why alveoli are very important. So walls of these alveoli, if you look at it, the walls of the alveoli are covered with capillaries and capillaries are blood vessels, they carry blood. So that, that is the beauty of alveoli. So walls of the alveoli contain an extensive network of blood vessels called capillaries and because of this property only alveoli is actually able to perform this task of gaseous exchange because in order to transport anything so if we say we want to provide oxygen to each and every cell of our body so we need something which can carry that oxygen to different parts of the body and that something is nothing but blood. So somewhere or the other we have to find a connection with blood. So that connection is actually found here in alveoli and that is why alveoli are called the functional units of lungs because the most important function of lungs is to provide oxygen to different parts of the different cells of the body so that they can carry out oxidation of food and also to expel out carbon dioxide. So this actual exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide take place at alveoli and why alveoli? Due to the presence of network of blood vessels on the alveoli. So the next important part that needs to be discussed is the diaphragm because diaphragm plays a very important role during the process of breathing. So as I have mentioned before, it is a dome shaped partition which separates thorax from abdomen. So this is the thoracic cap. This portion is head. The next portion is thorax and then the bottom portion is abdomen. So thorax and abdomen, they are separated by this muscular partition, which is called the diaphragm. And the shape is a dome shaped partition. So this is the shape of a dome. So it is muscular in nature and since it is muscular in nature, so muscles are capable of contraction and expansion. Now when it contracts and expands, what happens? The diaphragm is capable of moving up or down. So it can go up, it can come down. So that's how it can also change the uh, internal space of the lungs because the base of the lungs are resting on the diaphragm and as I have mentioned before that lungs are also elastic in nature. So as the diaphragm moves up or down the entire space inside the thoracic cavity also changes because if the diaphragm moves up the space within the thoracic cavity will reduce. If the diaphragm moves down the space within this thoracic cavity will increase. So again that's the beauty of having a muscular diaphragm since we have a muscular diaphragm therefore this is all this is all flexible inside the space is all flexible contraction and expansion of diaphragm adjust the space in our lungs during breathing now as i have mentioned before also that when we breathe in we have some extra air which needs more space so that space is created within the lungs by movement of the diaphragm so in that case the diaphragm moves down when it moves down more space is available here so more space is created within the lungs similarly when we breathe out so all that air is going out so you really do not need so much of space so that time the diaphragm moves up so that the lungs will like become smaller and less space will be there inside the lungs so that's how the movement of diaphragm up and down decides the space in our lungs and that plays a very important role during breathing in and breathing out Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.